Welcome to this webinar. Uh, I'm John Sprack and this is whistleblowing, causation, interim relief, compensation and uh, settlement uh, areas that we're going to deal with. But uh, let me just begin by outlining the agenda, so to speak. Uh, I'm going to begin by the causes of action which protect the whistleblower. Uh, and um, yeah, I suppose I should say that whistleblower is uh, pff, uh, the common term uh, that we all use, but the technical term, of course, is protected disclosure, the person who makes the protected disclosure. So first of all, the causes of action that, which protect that whistleblower, uh, essentially uh, from unfair dismissal or from detriment. So two uh, causes of action, and I'll be looking at the differences between those in the course of the webinar. Second, as to what is a qualifying disclosure? What are the areas which protection extends to, if you like to put it that way? Next, to the essential requirement, which is that there must be uh, by the person uh, on the part of the person who makes the disclosure a reasonable belief that it is in the public interest. Then I'll move on to the subject on which there's been uh, some recent quite important case law about hidden reasons. That is where the person who makes the decision to dismiss, for example, um, isn't the one who is uh, motivated by the need to um, take action against the whistleblower, uh, but influences the person who does, hidden reasons. Then to move on to uh, who is protected uh, and uh, the dismissal and detriment compared. Uh, there are different remedies for them, different st um, uh, standards of proof and so on. Uh, which makes makes it all sort of a little bit complicated. The area of claims against co-workers and then gagging clauses, uh, non-disclosure agreements in and, and their, their uh, uh, limitation with regard to uh, the area of whistleblowing. Uh, and finally, the remedy which is um, uh, almost unique to whistleblowing and that is uh, interim relief.